Okay, well, you guys might be familiar with my wife's 09 Audi A4, some people call it a B8 A4, uh, Quattro. Um, we did some motor work on it. You can see the intercooler, KO4, ECS tuned. Um, it's, it's just a nice little driver. These cars are really nice. Um, you know, they got a good bit of power, but when you just do a little bit of tune-up stuff, it makes it really fun to drive, and they're just so comfortable. Problem is, her car has got 215,000 miles on it, and the struts are just not, not liking life. They're, uh, it's got a little bit of a speed wobble. You put on the brakes, and it's not the rotors that are warped, but you start putting on the brakes, and the whole thing just starts to shimmy and shake. So, we got some upgraded parts. I'll show those to you in a minute. But first, I wanted to bust out the measuring tape because the struts and springs that we're putting on are uh, Bilstein. They're over here in these boxes. Bilstein struts and springs all around, all four corners. They're a little, they're say 30 to 35 millimeter lowering, so we're going to see. Uh, and then we got some power stop rotors and pads for all corners so drilled and slotted with ceramic pads ceramic and carbon fiber blend pads um, so this is what we're going to be working on for the next couple days uh, I mean I, we could bust it out in one day if it were you know the beginning but it's like you know in the evening on Sunday so just getting it in here uh, had another project we were working on anyway let's do a measurement real quick and uh, we'll see what we got I'll set you there, zoom up a little bit, and this is the rear, and uh, it's exactly, like right to the center there is 28 inches, 28 inches on the rear, um, let's see what we got on the, let's see what we got on the front here, I don't know if I got a spot to set you, but we'll, uh, this is going to be terrible filming, but center so what does that say uh, 27 and 5 eighths looks like 27 and 5 eighths we got a closer up over here of the rear I think it's right at 28 right to the top there fender is 28 all right so the next thing is we've got sorry we've got let me uncover this stuff Never ends with pieces around here. So we got these power stop, front and rear, and then the Bilstein. Um, I might, I haven't opened them up yet. Uh, I used the cardboard for making a, from the top of that, for making a bracket template. So I'll set up the tripod and we'll do a unboxing of this stuff. Um, you guys know I like AutoZone because it's really close. And on parts that I'm worried about not fitting, I don't like to order them online. You know, radiator or something like that is different. But uh, rotors and shocks and struts and stuff, I want to be able to take them back if possible. So anyway, uh, I'll set up and we'll do an unboxing of those to show you what they are. Uh, that Those three boxes, I think, were after taxes and everything, was like $1,500. So Bilstein, all four shocks, new springs, new rotors, new pads. I don't think that's too bad. Um, but we'll do a not a super detailed uh, video of the whole swap, but all right, <clears throat> this is the best I can do for an unboxing. I'm only going to waste your time with <laughs> wrapping a bunch of stuff. Uh, these are from AutoZone. This is a K5754. Came in two different boxes. This is the brake kit. Um, drilled and slotted. <clears throat> Each one comes labeled. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of neat. These are the fronts. Front passenger side. Driver's side. Rear passenger side. Second one's under there. Brake pads came in a little box with the hardware. This is a power stop, by the way. Uh, kit. Power stop. Ceramic brakes. Um, and one, I don't know if we have two or one, uh, that's a sensor, brake pad sensor. Kind of cool. Hopefully there's only one. If not, I might go replace it. <clears throat> replace the other one too. But I think this kit was like four something, 480, 460. 
comparable to a to a Brembo kit or a uh, StopTech kit if I ordered it through eBay. Uh, but I was worried about parts fitting. I think I mentioned that before, so I wanted to be able to take them back if possible. Again, this is uh, this kit is called it's a K754 by Power Stop. And then we got this kit is a Bilstein Stru I think it's a Pro or something two. Um, anyway, there's the number. It's the slight slightest modification to ride height. It's not stock, but a little bit lower. Um, there, performance two. So it should get about 30 to 35 millimeters low, which is a little over an inch lower, I should say. New struts, new shocks, new springs. Um, like I said, I measured this, so we'll see what happens when it gets low, gets uh, lowered. But if it pulls it down an inch, I think that'll be just perfect for that. I mean, it's pretty good now, but I mean, you know the rule. So there you go. There's all the parts we're playing with today. And uh, we'll see see how this works out. Need to get that engine out of here. Ugh. I swear my transmission jack holds the light more than it does anything else. <laughs> but uh okay, so these are pretty straightforward, I believe. We're gonna take this bolt off, these will pop out with some consternation, I'm sure. And this guy on the lower part of the strut comes out. There's a spreader you put in there to, um, sorry, there's a spreader you put in there to spread those apart so this can move up and down. Then this bolt down here, this whole piece will slide up. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about this guy right here. And this whole piece will slide up, then we'll go up top, and there's four bolts that come out. One, there's one behind here, two, three, and four and uh, the whole piece will slide down. Now, obviously that's just an overview, it's not going to actually work as easy as that, but we're going to give her a, give her a go, get everything loosened, and that'll see. That'll be the next thing. Uh, if I have specific trouble with something, I'll let you know what I did to solve it. So, alright. Alright, well, uh, I told you I'd let you know if there's any problems, and sure enough, this guy right here, so this is a steel bolt, this is aluminum, and there's steel studs that go up in there. I think what's happened is the uh, dissimilar metals have a tendency to corrode at higher rates than just rusting bolts. You can see there's just regular rust kind of thing happening. Metal. Um, this gets had aluminum on it. I'm sure people have seen it with a bolt that's got aluminum powder in there and then it gets wet and it turns hard. And eventually it turns back into kind of an aluminum-y gooey stuff that doesn't want to move. Um, I'm scared to break that bolt, so I just want—I don't want to try and force it out. So I've got it soaked. Um, I got the other side soaked also, just because that's the problem I ran into. And the other thing is uh, the strut mount. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy this tool or not. I was going to see if there's a good reason for it, but there's an oval-shaped tool. It's a socket that has an oval-shaped stud on it with two flat edges, and basically you stick it in there. You rotate it 90, and it spreads that out without um, actually bending it or scarring it or whatever <clears throat> and I'm a sucker for buying a new tool so but what it does is it gives you a uh, space on this it makes the hole bigger like that and you can slide it up and down without problems so um, we're gonna go in search of that tool probably start at AutoZone and there's a tool specialty store uh, not far from here so I'll check there well those are soaking so Yep, just thought I'd let you know. Alright, well, I came close to snapping this bolt. It is in there. I let it soak for a couple hours. I hit it with heat uh, underneath, heated it up pretty good. Tried running this back and tapping it out. Uh, and come, come from this side and pulling it out. I just, I couldn't get it out. And I was scared I was going to break it or twist it off. So. And then I would have to replace the whole spindle. I'm not doing that today. <laughs> so, um, I resorted to the next best thing, which was I took these guys out. You can see uh, out here. Uh, I don't know if that's possible. I know I worked on an earlier uh, B5, 
and these bolts didn't have clearance back here for some reason but I was able to get these out here so uh, the next step is to pull the four bolts out and drop this thing I did get this guy off um, I went to get the special tool and they didn't have one so what I ended up doing you see that gap I came in from the top and just just wedged it open until I got loose then I left the I left this in it the chisel in it Dang, that's loud um, anyway I left the chisel in it so that, so that it would stay loose uh, and again I wasn't trying to pry it open like massively just enough so it would get loose once it was loose I left the chisel in it and I was able to manipulate that off so next step is to pull these guys off but I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble the other side it's pretty tight too um, I didn't bring a light but uh, it's been soaking for a while and I'm gonna try and twist it if it gives me a hard time then I'm just gonna pull those bolts off the back again which I might just do anyway all right so that's the update so far uh, definitely big big problems with this guy here so maybe it didn't get lubed or something last time it was put together I can't remember if I worked on this before <laughs> well the four strut nuts on the driver's side are here 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 now this is this one is underneath the washer bin there's a washer bin here there's a 13 millimeter nut right here you just got to lift up and push that way and the whole thing comes out it goes into the thing over here and of course makes a mess on the floor <laughs> I'll have to clean that up but and then the last one is see if you can see it right there see that guy so it's right there um, anyway this is the hardest one it looks like to get to but it's got a grommet of some sort near it so um, I might look at maybe loosening something else up or maybe it just comes out beside all that uh, anyway and then the driver I'm sorry the passenger side ones are pretty straightforward um, again there's this guy and then this guy there that guy and then there's one underneath here another pose thing there you can see it better there and that should let them go so we're gonna do that now oh uh, to pull this out uh, the rubber thing came off here <clears throat> that that just slides off as a clip on and then the big the big uh, plastic piece there's a spin-off thing here <clears throat> looks like that and another one right here looks like that and you can just spin them off um, and then it just comes out here's the washer doodle show you how that kind of went in there and there like that that hole and then in. yeah I'm being stubborn headed because it's hard with with the camera but it slides in there there you go like that that's how it'll go in and I just went I just slid it out that way take it out pretty straightforward I think anyway so there's those little pieces they're just plastic I snap off I'm gonna take those four bolts out and should get the strut mounts out struts and strut mounts okay got the old guys off they were shot for sure I mean they're just one handed go down no rebound just disgusting um, got the parts cleaned up kept them side specific let them out here to dry for a minute I'll put them inside after dinner and then tomorrow we'll do some ass assembly um, a little sweep up going on and put the car up a little bit so it wouldn't sink but anyway that's uh, that's it for today we'll put another hour or so in tomorrow and uh, see where we get. Alrighty, we got them together. I didn't have to use a compressor or anything. You just they just spun on. Um, they pushed down a little bit, but the new nuts are 19s instead of 18s. I guess Bill Steen wanted a bigger nut. I really wanted to put the eyebok out so you could read it, 
but the pad in the hat up here is um, keyed so you can only put the spring in two ways either this way or upside down and upside down isn't even better anyway but I don't know I trying to just trying to make it look cool if someone looks under there but it is what it is um, yeah only took a second I started putting this one in uh, I got the three bolts now I'm gonna try this hard one just set it up in there it took no, there, nothing that's obvious you know just move stuff around and move stuff around and uh, just sets up in there anyway um, I'm gonna keep working I'll get this other one in maybe start getting the bolts back together on the front all right so if you look down on that it's very difficult to uh, get a socket on there and you don't want it to be I've already got it in there but what I did is I used a screwdriver because that's just a boot and I kind of put it in there and pried that back a little bit and then I got from this side this thing it gets out of the way here hold on a second there we go and it's just rubber so you can bend it back out of the way pretty good with just a really you see I'm not putting much pressure on that it's a long skinny screwdriver so yeah but once you get that tab that rubber tab out of the way you can get your uh, socket on there and tighten her down I saved this one to the last because it was so I knew everything was all aligned these are all hand tight but they're all the way in you know finger tight so that I let you know that that's the only problem I ran into there So before I tighten those, you saw me look underneath and what I was doing is just kind of looking to see if the outline of the top of the shock mount was in a uh, similar place before. Make sure it wasn't kittywampus or not clearing back here. I saw it in through the holes, but I wanted to make 100% sure. So just kind of went down here and checked. And you can see a little bit of shadowing, so it's not exactly in the same spot. It's pretty close. Um, yeah. Something else I noticed, not to be alarmed about, is the bosses that the, these bolt into. All these bolts are exactly the same length, but the bosses um, are different lengths. So I'm used to seeing bolts sticking out of thread holes similar amounts on brackets. It's kind of a good design thought process. Um, for some reason, some, some of them are longer or shorter, but they're all the same long, but the same length bolts. So. They uh, can't be put in the wrong spot, but everything's seated properly, and uh, they're good. So obviously, I bolted. I bolt. I filmed the bolting of <laughs> the easy side, the passenger side, so it would be quick and you wouldn't bore you to death. But now it's time to start putting all this stuff back together. Um, these are a little bit looser than I would have liked, but uh, maybe that's the next upgrade we do to this thing is some suspension components. But yeah, so we're going to start putting in, uh, we'll lift it up, start putting in all these uh, other components, and uh, maybe get the front end done today. Okay, well, so I wanted to show you this. Um, when the suspension is all relaxed and you tighten everything up, you have a tendency to bust seals on these little rubber rubber deals here or they uh, just are always under tension and then eventually they'll bust so what I like to do is jack it up to where I think it's going to be about normal ride height and then snug up all the bolts so then in its neutral position is there and when you lift it up like off a lift or something it uh, has a little bit of tension on it which is kind of uh, the way when you took it, when I took this apart, I, I noticed that exact same thing. It's like then it moved down a little bit when you <clears throat> released all the bolts. So, anyway, that's what I did here. Do that carefully if you're doing it on a lift because it has a tendency to jack up the whole car, especially on a really stiff frame car. But, oh, I got to put that bolt in, I just realized. But other than that, this side's done. We're going to switch to the other side. 
All right, so to get this bolt in right here, I loosened these guys. That gave me enough motion to get that lined up. It's got a weird, I know that knuckle goes down. I'll show you. So if you look at it this way, that knuckle looks like it goes down this way and the bolt looks like it comes in from the top. You see that? It's just deceptive. It's, it's cut in an angle. You can see this angle right here is almost straight up and down, which is parallel with this guy. So it's deceptive, but um, don't cross thread it. Make sure you get it in with your fingers. You can push up on this. You can see how loose it is. So push it up on this to get it lined up. And then do both sides and then tighten them all down. So that's the next thing I had problems with. <clears throat> all right, so um, here's the rundown of what we're going to try and do. There's a staple right here and a split in this. You see it? Um, that'll get us access to the two bolts up here. And then we're going to take the bottom bolt out right there. That'll get those off and let our lower control arm go down um, as far as possible. Then I'm going to check the tension. And then as needed, uh, I'm going to remove these guys here. Not remove them, but... Um, uh, oh, wait, sorry. Back here. There's a panel here that's got to come off. Um, over here. It's better to see. Uh, remove those. Anyway, to get to that access to the main bolts that hold the subframe in. See that? There's four of them, I believe. And we'll lower it down slowly until we got proper spring stuff. That's the thought process anyway. We'll see how that works out. And uh, come along for today. Alrighty. I got this side done um, with the spring. So what I'm going to do now is just do a kind of live action of what I had to do. Relatively simple. Um, some other videos online that I've seen people trying to pull the springs out without doing this. This is if you got a lift or you can get underneath your car safely with it jacked up. This is the way to go, I think. So um, I had to pull. I'll have to pull this bolt out. This guy. Let's see if I can get oh, this way. This bolt. This one, which I think are 16s. This guy's an 18. This takes a crowbar. I got it over there set up. And then this one, I think is an 18, and also takes a crowbar. Um, and then I got my stand underneath here on the main beam. And what I'm gonna do is take these bolts out and then lower this down, pop the spring out, put the new one in, lift it back up, put the bolts on. Pretty straightforward, but I wanted to uh, just show you how, how it is. Had a little bit of trouble lining this up on the other side, so we'll do a better job, but yeah, here we go. that one on uh, like before the top nut <clears throat> comes with a new one it's a one size bigger so the stock is 16 uh, the Bilstein is 17 um, I noticed also this goes on the bottom here it's just a snap-on plastic thing I don't know rock guard or something maybe uh, this the outer diameter of this guy is too big so I'm gonna have to leave those off I'll compare those together so you can see there's a little bit a little bit bigger. At any rate, oh not one more to do, then we'll throw them up in there. This thing just pops off, captures on the nut, and then they spin off. Pretty straightforward. Alright, let's see what it looks like.
You're funny. Ooh, that's slick. Ah, we raised it to about a half inch lower than the stock. <laughs> it actually looks pretty good before I was able to put my whole foot up in there. So I can't even get the tip in there. <laughs> get the tip. <laughs> cool. Well, I, I'm going to give it a bounce and then give it a measurement. Ooh. Oh, she's, she's tight. She's not as bouncy as it was before for sure. Are you still recording? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. All right, so grab this tape measure and see if we can get a get a measurement here. You know how hard it is to pull a tape measure out with. Oh, well, look at that! Straight up and down. So twenty-seven and twenty-six and seven eighths. So about an inch and an eighth on the front. And right at 27 there. So, yeah. She looks good too. Just enough of a, lo a lower, just to, just to give us some love. Look at that. Hey, old buddy. All right. I'm going to take her for a test drive, which is going to be an amount, amount to be going to dinner with my wife, which is why she came out here tell me to get my butt in gear finish up that's gonna be that for this guys I hope uh, some of this is useful and maybe those part numbers on on this car is a 09 a4 so it's a b8 it's a quattro automatic um, hopefully that'll give you some information that you need if you are looking at buying those Bilsteins from AutoZone or online it doesn't matter they have another set that goes a little lower I kind of like this it's nice it'll give her drivability and kind of sexy looking. So that'll be that. And give you a better view of her. Kind of like this. And that'll be it for the day.